Thank you so much for joining us here on Thursday afternoon. It's a bit of a different time for us, but we changed the time for our webinar so that we could accommodate our colleagues in China. And we're so glad that so many of you have joined us today. I think you're all as interested as I am in what we are doing with their China program. It's such an important country. We know that it's critical to work very collaboratively and well with the, with the country of China so that we can make a mark and really change the course of our planet in this determining decade. And I'm very glad that we will be listening to and learning from our country program director, Joyce Ma, as well as the director of science, who is Dr. Jin Tong. So thank you very much for joining us. I uh, just wanted to introduce myself. I am Liz Harvey Roberts. I am the director or the chief uh, uh, development officer for the California chapter here in our state. We're so glad that so many of you supporters could join us today, and we're very grateful for your interest and time in this very troubling time here in our uh, both our state and country. So I uh, just wanted to say also this Determining Decade series has been stood up in this time when we can't see you in the field, we cannot welcome you at the events, so this is the way that we can get together, and uh, thank you again for your time. We are have put this uh, course of webinars together. The first one was really focused on California and what we're doing here in our state. The second series is really more focused on international programs. And for those of you that were with us last week, we looked at Africa and the crisis that is happening there uh, due to lack of tourism and just basically uh, lack of economic strength. And that results in more poaching and some crisis for wildlife. So we really enjoyed that and uh, so many of you were able to join us there. Now we're going to focus uh, really on a, a, a primate that is in danger and learn more about the country program that surrounds the conservation program that is trying to bring that primate back. And so uh, the, the title of our program today is Saving an Iconic Primate Species in China. So as many of you know that have joined us previously, we want to interact with you. So as you're learning from our two speakers, please think of questions and just have your cursor hover over the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. You will also have the chance to add questions as we get into the question and answer period, which is really at the bottom of the hour. And so uh, we will also be sending out a survey at the end. So please do respond and let us know how you enjoyed it. Let us know if there's any additional uh, questions you might have and then any other uh, suggestions for future topics, because we really would like this to meet your needs and your interests. And so with that, I would like to introduce our speakers. Uh, so Joyce Ma is the director of our China program. She's going to say a little bit about herself and then Dr. Jin Tong. So I'm going to turn it over to you now, Joyce, and thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Liz. Hi, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This is Joyce Ma speaking to you from a bright early morning in Beijing. Um, yeah, you probably can see the light, uh, hopefully. Um, uh, maybe I should say something about myself. I have been working for the Nature Conservancy for close to four years. Prior to that, I had worked for the government. I also had a four years overseas working experience in UK. And since 94, I started working for a multinational companies all in Beijing as business manager and the business executive. Uh, like four years ago, uh, when I brought, I was brought to this opportunity working for the um, Nature Conservancy. One of the interviewees I remember was uh, Jack Ma, who was uh, TNC China board chair at the time. And his comment was interesting to me. He said, one less business manager uh, means nothing in comparison to one more environmental, environmentalist. And that, that is very interesting and, and inspirational. So here I am, I've been working uh, four years and, uh, and I found the experience very uh, challenging. Uh, but also very rewarding. Uh, the, the mission is so inspirational and, and I couldn't wait to share with you our story and, and uh, our conservation achievement in China. But before that, I wanted to invite my colleague, Dr. Jin Chung, to say a few words about herself. 
Jean. Thank you. Um, thank you, Liz. Yeah. Um, good afternoon, everyone. It's my really my pleasure to be here to share some of my conservation stories in China. And my name is Jin Tong, uh, the science director of China program. And I have been this TNC for more than 11 years. It's my first job and I hope you'll be the, the, the only one. I'm a, a trained zoologist and my PhD research was about the ecology and the social biology of another endangered primate species in China. And before graduation, I've gotten, uh, by chance, got to know TNC and uh, inspired by its really tangible conservation work on the, the first frontiers. So that's really inspired me to change my career, pay, uh, career path to, from a scientist to a conservationist. And uh, the first several years in TNC, um, my job is really uh, like the Yunnan Golden Monkey Conservation Project, and then um, spread to more places to the protect protect areas, uh, establishment and management to more uh, remote areas. So the working conditions, you can see something like uh, my background, it's just, just uh, traveling in the deep forest and working with the local communities. And um, it's really a very pleasure memory for me than enjoying the fantastic, fantastic uh, landscape. And then um, several years ago, I moved to Beijing and led the team of the scientists to an, for another mission to help our uh, conservation efforts to be more strategic and evidence-based. So later, uh, after Joyce, I will tell you more about our you know, golden monkey stories. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jin Tong. Uh, I think what will happen is the first uh, in the next uh, 40 minutes or so, uh, Jin Tu and I will uh, will uh, talk to you about our conservation work, but I will start with a little bit of a general introduction. Uh, please, let's get started with our presentation. Okay, to put things into perspective, um, as most of you probably know already, uh, uh, globally, the Nature Conservancy has protected 120 million acres of land. We have operations in and and projects in 79 countries and I believe in all 50 states in the states and for the in the Asia Pacific where China falls under we have uh, projects and offices in 14 uh, countries and territories like the map uh, our uh, footprint goes up to uh, Mongolia and down to New Zealand next please now you are looking at the map of China. It is a giant rooster. That's the shape of, of, of the map. Uh, uh, same as uh, the US, I think both countries are of the 17 uh, most diverse countries in the world. Uh, that's uh, both uh, China and the US. But China is only after Brazil and uh, Colombia, the third most biodiverse country uh, in the world. Uh, but unfortunately, it's the also most threatened country. Uh, and uh, our uh, TNC's connection with China goes back to like 25 years ago. It started from southwest, where you can see on the map uh, a golden monkey, southwest, a big, a big round monkey face. Yeah, uh, back in 1995, when uh, Asia's economy was booming, um, there's a little story around that. Um, a Thailand developer uh, hired a um, Colorado-based consultant uh, by the name of Steve Moko. Uh, hired Steve to do a feasibility study in uh, Yunnan uh, Jade Mountain, Jade, Jade Dragon Mountain, uh, for a ski resort. So uh, Steve came. After some studies, he figured out this is not feasible to build a ski resort, but rather a perfect site for a national park. So uh, Steve happened to be a long-term PNC supporter and a member. So he ran his uh, uh, friend, uh, Carol Fox, who was the um, Asia Pacific uh, Development Manager. So he ran Carol and invited her to have a look 
So Carol did together with her colleagues, and one of which is the, the name uh, Edward Holt uh, Norton Senior. I believe his son is also very famous. So they came and uh, in 1998, they set up uh, our first office in China at Yunnan and started the 20 years, 20 years or so journey in China. For the first 10 years, uh, all the conservation work was supported by US uh, headquarters and donors uh, because the board at the time figured out without China, it was not a in, in, uh, in, uh, entire uh, organize, uh, global organization. So um, the, the, uh, that, that support uh, lasted for 10 years and uh, around 2019, a group of Chinese entrepreneurs uh, I name a few like Jack Ma, like Pony Ma, they figure out, you know, we have to do uh, the support by ourselves. So they did, they formed a China board and then started to uh, fund our work in China, for China. And now after 20 years, uh, we, our work uh, has covered, expanded from land now to ocean, to city, to water and to climate. And our team has expanded to six, 60 people and with 10 field projects across China in different provinces. And our headquarter is in Beijing. That's about our journey. Next. Um, I think the whole world had witnessed amazing uh, growth, uh, economic growth in China. Uh, but it has also come at a huge cost. Uh, on the right-hand side, I left, listed a few. For the, during the past 40 years, we have lost 40%, 50% uh, of coastal wetlands. And so many species has gone extinct. Fish, other forms of fauna and flora. And uh, almost all the cities, that's more than like 300 cities, in China has suffered severe air pollution and also the water security, soil health at great risk. This, uh, economic, this uh, environmental degradation has really shocked the country, the nation, and the government has to be, um, is forced to respond to it. Uh, this uh, administration has came into office, I think like seven years, seven, eight years ago, they start to take serious and harder measure to change the focus from GDP driven only now to more balanced uh, parameters to promote uh, green development, so to speak. And uh, its slogan, economic civilization is, is getting more serious. And uh, on the right hand side, you probably see um, the, the picture of, uh, I don't, don't know uh, how many of you know that, this is a very famous uh, Jackie uh, actor, Jackie Chen is a Kung Fu player. Uh, this is a picture we took from uh, TNC China's campaign, marketing campaign protecting wildlife. On Jackie's shoulder is Pangolian, this lovely creature. Uh, it's, it's also uh, on, at the edge of extinction. By this message, we wanted to send the, the wildlife is at great risk and it's everybody's responsibility to protect them. And uh, the private sectors and many individuals join forces of the government to make contributions. Unfortunately, uh, rec as recent as last week, Pangolin uh, is removed from uh, the pharmacopoeia of the Chinese traditional medicine, because pangolin is supposed to be a, a good how, a remedy for, in the Chinese uh, traditional medicine uh, uh, handbook. All this has led to great achievement and progress towards uh, the environmental re recovery and the restoration, but it still is a long way to go. And let's now move to the next slide, please. In the past 20 years, uh, we take pride in many of our achievements. Um, but one most we are most proud of uh, is what we've done 
uh, in, uh, to the Yunnan golden monkey. If there's only one, we make tangible difference, and it's, it is the one. Uh, now I wanted to pass on to my colleague, Dr. Jin Tung, to share you the story of what happened and what our work is about. Please, Jin. Thank you, Joyce. So uh, next, please. Um, when talking about the biodiversity situation in China, uh, I think the first image comes to most of people's mind might be the giant pandas. Only a few people knows about the Yunnan golden monkeys, even many of the Chinese people. So um, I'd like to show you a very short video to help you to meet this very lovely animal first. So please. From the video, uh, you can tell even not as famous as the giant pandas, this uh, Yunnan golden monkey really shares many similarities with the, the panda. Uh, the first of all, they are all black and white. Although the monkey is called golden, but it really doesn't show the golden fur. And um, both the, those uh, animals were only found in China and cannot be found any, any, uh, anywhere else in the world and already been highly endangered. And uh, last and the most important, they are really lovely animals and can uh, attract the people's eye. And, but these lovely uh, creatures also have many unique characters as you can see in the pictures. The first of all, it also called the snap nose monkeys is the scientific name because of their uh, upturned nostrils. There's often uh, also a joke from the local communities that um, during the rain, they can um, often hear the monkeys sneezing in the forest. And the most charming features for me is their human-like smiling face with a very striking red lip. And it's really recall me my uh, smiling babies. And they also have a very weird Moscan hairstyle. In, you can see in the, the left or in the uh, right up front photos. It makes them look very fashion. And to conservation, from that aspect, the most unique of this uh, Yunnan golden monkey is the live in a very high attitude, about, even about the 3,000 meters, and rely on very large patches of the intact forest. So that means if once we can find the monkeys, there exist in a um, very large patch of the forest. And they live in very peaceful families. I can, you can show in the um, left photo and with one husband, several wives, and their babies. And several families could be grouped together and to forage and move around. Sometimes the, the group could be as large as 500 individuals. They are basically even uh, could could grow um, very large. They are basically very vegetarians and only eat leaves, fruits, and some lichens during the hot winter. So next slide, please. And uh, TNC care about the Yunnan monkeys not only because it's a very lovely animal, but because its home lies in the, the heart of the three parallel ri uh, rivers, the famous world heritage in the uh, southwestern China, in Yunnan province. And this region is home to one-fifth of the country's plant species and also uh, one-fourth of the animal species. So you can imagine how biodiverse it is. As you can see in the left pictures, the uh, fantastic uh, forest landscape where I was um, 
traditionally um, working under. And because the monkey is depending on the large primary forest, so conserving this monkey and this forest home could really bring an umbrella of about 5% uh, of the country's remaining primary forest. So just like you can see from my background, and as well as a thousands of the endangered and endemic wildlife species could uh, also live inside this uh, forest home. And you can love just like this um, lovely uh, red pandas in the middle. And what's more, there's a, also home to tens of the ethnic minority groups who have very diverse traditional cultures and really highly dependent on those natural resources for living. So next, please. However, as most of the uh, threatened species, this monkey is also um, severe, um, have, have some threats to their long-term survival, even more endangered than the gen pandas. As, as Joyce has indicated in the previous slides, due to the, the red, uh, rapid economic development, the large-scale deforestation and degradation made those forests in this area into very small patches, while the poaching and unsustainable natural resource extractions by the local people, because they need to um, make a living, even made their, this monkey's life even harder. So when TNC initiated our uh, conservation actions here about 20 years ago, only about uh, 1,500 individuals re remaining in the wild. As you can show in the, the right, in the distribution map, they have been isolated into 15 very small populations. Several of these groups were only have a no more than 50 individuals. That means they will be highly possible to extinct in the following um, 100 years. So that's very um, sad for this species. Next, please. Next, please. Yeah. But uh, we are really proud of, of this because of TNC, the destinies of this species and this forest home really have been rewritten. And this um, 20 years conservation journey also reflect our uh, conservation uh, the PNC's positioning from a very beginning a field practitioners to now and more thought leaders and enabler to catalyze more collaborations and um, input together. So when we first start this conservation in, uh, in Nangoda Monkeys in 2001, we only did some very basic studies to understand the monkeys. And in just in one most isolated monkey group, Mount Laojun, where we still continue the work there now. And we've uh, worked with some previous hunter, as you can show in the, the left, um, and turn him into a determined conservationist. Uh, he will uh, conduct the voluntary patrols to protect monkeys from the hunting. So it's a big transition. Those kind of the efforts was really uh, gradually recognized by more and more local people and the government. And the, um, the one person patrol have really expanded to a team of the 12 members. I can see in the middle photos and, and our conservation actions were also expanded to more monkey groups. And finally, another um, 10 years later, a range wide conservation network was officially launched last year. And this network really wants to catalyze more coordinated and collaborated efforts across the uh, different government agencies, academics, community groups, NGOs, and foundations like TNC. And we all together to protect this whole system of the monkeys and its home at a larger scale. So, because of the, those kind of the collaborative uh, efforts during the past 20 years, the monkey's population really have, has been doubled from the beginning about uh, 1500, now to already 3000. But it's still not safe enough for the uh, long-term survival for this species. So our range-wide network 
really uh, have a name called uh, Yunnan Golden Monkey 3000 Plus. So next, please. So this network uh, has gathered about uh, uh, 23 member organizations and um, more will open, uh, will join us um, along the way. And we are working together now on four co-actions. The first one is about uh, the habitat. The monkeys are threatened by the really uh, highly fragmented ha habitat. So we are now um, doing the strategic uh, identification of the restoration of those um, degraded habitat and to try to increase the connectivities to help the monkeys could easily to migrate and find their wives because uh, the males will migrate uh, in their larger range. And the second one, and most funda fundamental and uh, effective efforts are really the, the patrols and monitorings. So we, along with um, authority have an standardized uh, monitoring patrol on each of the monkey groups and their surrounding ecosystems. But it is um, now could be helped by some modern information technologies. Uh, for example, with the help with uh, Microsoft, we are trying to use AI to identify this species from our camera trap photos. And the third part is the, also the most challenging, but it's um, uh, important for the long term, is to engage the local communities into conservation and incubate some environmentally friendly um, industries to have them really benefit from the con conservation. And because we not only care about monkeys, but we care about all the lives within this range, include the people. And the last, and is to let more general public like uh, UO to know about these monkeys and their uh, importance for conservation and for our, our lives, and then could support or participate in conservation efforts. So this uh, should be achieved by our awareness campaign, as well as the nature education and volunteer program. So the, the photos shows our newly built nature education centers within one of the um, monkey groups, the Mount Laojun. And next, please. So I um, love to say um, the Yunnan Golden Monkeys uh, conservation journey never ends, and our past achievement did empower us to the way forward. So uh, the monkey's stories is only just one of the many success in China that have made for the biodiverse conservation. And I want to uh, come back to Joyce and to have some uh, final summaries and key takeaways for our today's speak. Uh, Hi, Joyce. Thank you. Thank you, Jin Tong. Uh, yeah, 20 years is a long time. So, uh, but we wanted you to uh, remember with a few key, key, uh, key takeaways. Um, as we learned from uh, Dr. Jin Tong, uh, to protect Yunnan golden monkeys, not only for its own sake, uh, but it also means its well-being means a great, healthy um, happy, uh, ecosystem, which can shelter other forms of um, fauna and flora, and also is key to the local indigenous people. Um, so this large-scale uh, e e ecosystem uh, is, the, is, the, is our uh, target. Next. Uh, we have done great work in have um, doubled the golden monkey from 1500 to 3000 now. But as we learned from uh, Dr. Jin Tong, uh, this work is, is still hard. And uh, we, the, the, the monkeys are uh, separated into 15, 17 groups. And each group still has challenging uh, tasks to grow that by themselves. So uh, the job will continue. We'll need more help from all over the place. Next. As we learned, um, the, the golden monkey's uh, well-being means a lot to local community. It, it is key for 
uh, the, the local farmers who used to be hunters and the lum lumber workers. Now we have to turn them to be friends to the monkeys. And so we need to care about their livelihood. They used to depend on it. Now we have to provide more support. Uh, what TNC's program has involved is to finance and support farmers into and turn them, train them to be a patrol, patrol team and provide them support, financial support and also uh, uh, buy them certain facilities like infrared cameras and other facilities and train them to be more professional in supporting the, the habitat, but also uh, supporting uh, the, the ecosystem building. For that, uh, we have run programs that cost like 250,000 US dollar a year. We have received all forms of uh, support from global and also from uh, China, more and more so lately. Uh, but uh, we, um, we welcome uh, with that. I wanted to uh, end here and I, I wanted to invite you to uh, Yunnan. Yunnan actually is the most beautiful and the most uh, uh, economic, uh, ecosystem diverse, uh, rich country and the province in, in China. And, uh, and, and if you're lucky, you probably will meet a uh, smiling face of golden monkey. Our, um, our uh, project site is on the Jade uh, Yulong Mountain, and you, um, uh, you, you can, uh, we can provide more details in the next page for you to contact. Thank you so much, Joyce and Jen. That was really fascinating. And I think all of our hearts are warmed by seeing those cute faces. I was interested in doing some reading just ahead of this webinar that the, um, the golden monkey is actually more endangered than the uh, panda. So it's great that you've brought this to our attention and that we are addressing this as an organization. So now I just want to invite you all to please type in your questions. We have the uh, Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. And thank you to those that have already typed yours in. So I see that we have a few that are specific to the golden monkey. And then we have a number of questions that are also more broad to our China program. So I'm just going to start with the golden monkey ones and then maybe open it up to a larger issue. So uh, first of all, someone's asking, is the golden monkey used in traditional Chinese medicine or eaten? Yeah, it isn't really kind of the most severe um, stress in the, the past years, but now, not now, because local uh, people really rely on the, the monkeys for meat. It's not for um, some traditional medicine, but really for meat, uh, the, their protein sources for the local people. So that, that's also the reason why there are many hunters live inside this region. And the hunting wildlife is also some of these um, traditions of the, the uh, different ethnic groups. So, uh, but now it's because wildlife protection law is more and more strict and uh, the the public awareness to the local people, uh, the awareness about the conservation of these um, um, protected animals is um, increased. So uh, the, the poaching uh, threat is less and less. Okay. Thank you very much. So uh, we also have another question from Dale. Does the golden monkey have a specialized or general diet? Uh, what are its main foods? Is um as I said, even it's a look a very big guy. Is um um basically a vegetarian. Most of the food rely on the leaves, and the one of the most uh, special issues for this monkey is because they live very high, and during the winter there were no uh not many food, and as the the fresh leaves, so they mainly rely on one kind of the uh, plant named lichen is a, a kind of a fungi attached to the, the uh, tree barks in a, a kind of um, a, a attached to some uh, spurs or the spruce trees. So they eat kind of that kind of the lichens that, that like their rice. Okay, thank you. And then uh, we have another question. Do they have natural predators other than 
in his predators, many uh, natural predators like the big cats, the leopards, and also maybe some uh, snow leopards or uh, wolves and fox also live inside these areas. But um, even worse, the large cats um, disappeared many years ago. So now the uh, most distinguished uh, predators is um, human for the monkey. Yeah. Okay, and we have another from Joseph. Uh, so in terms of poaching, why is it being poached? Is it, uh, you had mentioned for food, are there anything, yeah. is it for pet trade or, or other certain parts of it? Um, pet trade is not really the reason there. So mm -hmm. the, the major reason, just like I said, is for food. And mm -hmm. now local people won't rely on the, the monkeys uh, as a food resources, but some of the um, rich people or uh, some of the, the people who have a very special habit you know, really wants to have some bad life for meat. So there's still some, uh, hunting pressures on these monkeys. It's, so we need to keep on the patrol. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So uh, just broadening it up a, a little bit, is there strong support, this is from Meredith, is there strong support in China for protecting the monkeys? Has TNC been involved in building that support? Yes, uh, the answer is definitely yes, uh, and it's growing this support. Uh, as we see, uh, TNC has played a pivotal role uh, in protecting the uh, monkey throughout the past 20 years. And uh, we see we were a pioneer uh, in really uh, uh, starting a field, uh, field project, but demonstrating how to work with the local communities in protecting the habitat. Uh, secondly, is we, um, we were a uh, 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 Pioneer, we were a pioneer, then we were a whistleblower, right? Be telling more people this is uh, this species in danger. Now we are a uh, we were catalyst. Now, as uh, we learned from Jin Tung, this network, we grow ourselves from one team of uh, patrol, and now to one person of patrol, now to a team, and now to a network. So we play in this catalyst role, working with all partners. Now it's the whole range protection system, a network that will ensure we build a, uh, the, uh, a healthy ecosystem for the monkeys. Good, okay, that's great. So uh, just gonna broaden it a little bit now. Uh, what is TNC China doing to stop and prevent illegal wildlife trade in China in general? Yeah, I, I think it's related to, to uh, my uh, the last question. It was just one example of it. Uh, I still see uh, TNC as a, has a role to play, but we are as an international NGO. We are com our our role is confined to certain space, but that space is still huge. We can play, so we we really need to uh, play a role as a pioneer, whistleblower. Uh, and the catalyst, and we do that. If you see the picture I showed, we brought uh, the, the high net worth individuals and the private uh, segment, and also uh, influential opinion leaders uh, to uh, pay attention to, uh, to, to this issue. And also we worked with the government agencies, with the researchers and uh, a university academias to remind them, to work with them, to collect the data, to, uh, to form an opinions that will the whole, make the whole society to pay attention. But not only that, uh, we, we figure out uh, the, the well-being of, the, of the, uh, the monkeys and also its ecosystem is one thing, but in the meantime, uh, the livelihood of the local stakeholders, mostly the farmers, need to be also taken care of. That's why we, we are on the ground, provide a physical and a tangible uh, support to them. So they don't live without, as a, as a sacrifice, as a scapegoat of those protection. There has to be joint uh, wing that, so that they don't suffer too much from it. Thank you, Joyce. That's great. Yeah, sorry, I just want to add a little more piece about the legal trade uh, things. 
and we are realize, realizing that more and more the illegal wildlife trade have been happening on the internet base. So because our um, uh, partner corporate corporations were most of the internet uh, companies, so we have working with those um, internet companies like uh, Tencent, Alibaba to launch many of the awareness campaign, also build an uh, warning and uh, um, kind of detection platform to find and prohibit such kind of illegal web trade on their um, internet base. That's great. We need technology to help us harness, uh, you know, every, every resource that we can get to stop poaching. So that's wonderful. Uh, so Natalie is asking, are these the same species as the golden monkey in Rwanda? Uh, and she said specifically Volcano National Park. Um, not really. As I said, this Yunnan golden monkey is really uh, endemic to China. It only can be found in China. And under this um, similar uh, taxonomies for these um, uh, snub nosed monkeys, there are um, in total five species. And uh, three among this, th those five species and all could only be found in China. There is an, uh, another two is just uh, found in China and bordered uh, some other countries like uh, Myanmar and Vietnam. So all these uh, snap nose monkey groups were uh, found in Asia. Okay, thank you. So Rich is asking, how does TNC China work with the Chinese local and national government to protect species? Yes, uh, TNC is an international NGO. We are uh, sponsored by National Administration of uh, uh, Forest and Grassland. This is our official sponsor. Uh, we work a lot with uh, this administration. And also we work with other, or other uh, government agencies like Ministry of uh, Ecology and Environment, Ministry of uh, Natural Resources, and the, at the central level. Uh, we call, we uh, also a member of China's top uh, political think tank, uh, 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 the uh, Conservation Council for, uh, for China, uh, in which TNC is, is an mem international member of 60. Uh, at the size, um, at the local at the local level, uh, we we will get uh, approval and the permission from all on-site projects. That means uh, in the in the process we worked, we had a lot of communications. We identify uh, problems and challenges, and uh, we come up with proposals. So they uh, they approve and they support us. Uh, oftentimes, uh, the government really uh, liked TNC's approach because we are really a helper, helper to them in filling some of the gaps and some of the spaces they, as a government, cannot play. And we are more resourceful, resourceful in providing uh, support from private sectors, from individuals, and also from the international spaces. Well, and I know that your board has been so wonderful about raising money to uh, also distribute in other places around the world. So uh, very exactly. resourceful. <laughs> Thank you for, for adding that. Yeah, I didn't yeah. mention in my previous uh, uh, introduction and the China board uh, was formed in 10, 2009. And now it's, it's in this 10 years, they not only supported China's uh, conservation works, uh, but also they formed uh, China Global Conservation Fund that is to support TNC's global, global uh, conservation projects. Over the past seven years, they have supported uh, over 30 projects uh, across 16 countries. So it's, 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 it's a good suggestion and commitment to the global uh, issues. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, so we have lots more questions. Uh, Chris is asking, is there an attempt to prevent genetic inbreeding in isolated populations? Getting back to the golden monkey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are uh, just uh, starting those kind of a work. And um, the first is to understand their genetic, uh, genetic diversity. So um, in some of our partners really done a great work to collect uh, those samples and uh, making this um, uh, physical, uh, make, making this studies. We are still wait for that um, uh, output and some results. 
and to see how is the current gen genetic diversity is and is there already some inbreeding risk. And the, uh, the next, step, next step and definitely should do is to uh, restore their um, habitat and increase the habitat connectivity. So this um, really are very important approach for our uh, whole, sy whole system large scale conservation approach. Thank you. So Natalie is asking, is there more or less support for preserving other wild species in China versus traditionally like more than 30 years ago? So how is the conservation wave hitting China and what is, what is the national interest? So Joyce? Yeah, I, I, think, I think the, uh, the, the wildlife protection, the highlight of that uh, as, um, uh, as, as far as I understand, it started with the giant panda. That is a national treasure, and that is uh, that really uh, is the pivotal uh, point for people's attention to. But ever since then, there's a divide, more divided the interests group. Uh, and some like TNC is going to protect uh, golden monkeys. I know there are some others to. Uh, other uh, uh, faunas and floras, and there is widely diverse interest group, and mostly, uh, of course, by government, but also a lot of uh, more. We see a rising, amazing rising amount of the interest group in protecting uh, 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 different kinds of, of animals, uh, tigers. Right? We know tigers, leopards, uh, and, and and fishes, and uh, etc. What yes, about um, COVID-19? Is COVID-19... Oh, I'm sorry, did I interrupt? I want to echo, Joyce, that because of the, uh, just mentioned our uh, national strategy or uh, towards more and more uh, ecological, uh, ecological protection. So the eco-civilization is the uh, this na national theme. And under this theme, more and more environmental protection efforts have been put uh, through the, the government side. And uh, for the species protection, there is also a very large program to re-establish uh, some national parks to protect the large uh, intact ecosystems to protect those um, species habitat. But you know, China is such kind of a uh, diverse in the species, uh, the, the wildlife. So normally when uh, we doing the, the wildlife protection, we will choose some uh, uh, we call the flagship species, like the Inango monkey of the uh, giant pandas. They are very charming, and also they, they can uh, attract attention to our very large uh, ecosystem protections. And that will benefit more thousand or, or even more other wildlife species. Exactly. Uh, so, sorry, I was about to ask a question about COVID-19. Has uh, the pandemic affected our conservation work in China at all? Yes, yes. Uh, I think uh, all of all, many, uh, almost all bad consequences, uh, one, uh, one positive of this bad situation is China has uh, is weakened the, the, the country and people on the importance of, of wildlife uh, protection. Uh, you know, as, as fast as in the late February, China has, uh, legislators has passed a law to completely ban the wildlife uh, consumption and the trade. And this is, um, is a good news uh, for, for the for more uh, uh, faunas and uh, forms of fauna, and uh, and this uh, will uh, give people more um, attention. Of course, mostly the government to uh, in in their policy making and in the law making uh, to protect the nature, to protect the wildlife. I see this is a, this really a positive uh, impact. Unfortunately. Fortunately, unfortunately. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean, yeah. Yes. All right, that's great to know. Um, and so Sally Liu is asking, is the pressure on habitat fragmentation more from local communities in developing subsistence living or corporations logging? Can we provide alternative livelihoods? 
Yeah, um, this could be phased out uh, in previously, normally maybe uh, 40 or uh, 30 years ago, the most uh, um, threat for the, the habitat fragmentation is um, commercial logging because um, the, the forest area and the, the timber um, consumption needs is um, very high. But uh, you know, as in um, uh, 1998, the, the national have been um, enacted a um, national logging, logging ban in the Yangtze River Basin because of the flooding issues. So the commercial logging have really been banned for uh, since that, that time. And after uh, the next uh, several decades, the major uh, threats comes from the infrastructure, infrastructure building like the roads and the mining and some of these um, new buildings and urbanization needs um, for, the, for the development. So uh, currently the most of the um, stress for habitat from fragmentations, mainly from those, the human needs to develop the uh, economy. I think we have time for one more question and there is one uh, that's kind of a, I think a general question about what's it like to work in China as a foreign nonprofit, specifically an American nonprofit? And uh, are we, this is from Eric, are we able to acquire land in China to preserve habitat or is that prohibited? So maybe talk about some of the legal framework about what we can and cannot do in China. Thank you for that question. I think this is important. Since uh, 2017, uh, China has issued a new law for uh, the international NGOs, and uh, and now we have uh, been governed by that. Uh, so it's been, uh, like I said uh, before, it's been confined to a space. Uh, that space, I can say, uh, to be honest and fair, that is is also huge uh, for us to play because the the issues. If you consider China, the size only really matter. You know, matters a lot. Uh, so we do we do have a role. And and uh, trying and the government agencies like to get uh, international NGOs opinions and uh, like to share experience from other parts of the world. That's the bridge role we are bridging role we play. And um, another is we uh, we cannot acquire land. This for sure, uh, land acquisition is, uh, is 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 not feasible. But we can work with land owners. Uh, in China, most of the uh, preserved uh, na uh, national treasure, I mean, uh, the, the uh, management uh, preserves are owned by government. We work with government along the lines and supporting them and uh, uh, advising them uh, and provide the technical support on how to design using TNC's uh, science-based uh, toolkits and uh, uh, approaches and uh, uh, processes to support them improve their management uh, practices and in providing more perspectives and train provide the trainings and also provide more uh, share more experiences with them so we are more the, on an advisory role uh, rather than a, a, a direct player so to speak uh, but I, I, I say is, is that space is still uh, uh, quite large it is. It's great. It's, we have a lot of influence, and I know that's a similar approach uh, that we use in a lot of countries because we are restricted by their government laws, too. Yes. So with that, I'm going to just, uh, we're going to close it up. I want to just put a teaser out there that we have a really wonderful program uh, of cooperation between the California chapter and specifically UC Berkeley uh, and a climate institute at UC Berkeley with a very special university in uh, China. So if you want to know more about that, please let us know. And also, I know we didn't get to a number of your questions, so we will summarize those and send out answers in a, a PDF in a few days. So uh, don't worry about that. And we hope that you will join us next week. We are going to be talking about what we're doing in the Sea of Cortez in uh, fisheries and working with local fishermen to make sure that we are. And specifically, I'd just love to say thank you so much to Dr. Jin and to Joyce for joining us today so early in the morning there. So thank you.
Yeah, I wanted to say to our uh, California colleagues, thank you very much for providing us this opportunity for us to share our story. And I look forward to more uh, closer to working with you and, and you all welcome to Yunnan and to China. Thank you, we'll, we'll come. <laughs> yes, all welcome. right, so have a good afternoon, everybody. And uh, we are going to uh, just say goodbye now. Please do answer the survey when it comes out. And thanks a lot for joining us. Thank Bye. you. Thank you all. Bye-bye.